When I started this episode, I did not think it would be as dark slash heavy as it was. And when I do take a moment to think about it, it makes sense now why Mr. Chocolate acts like he does. Why he has so much drive to change Gullahorn, restructure it because of how corrupt it is. Now it makes sense, because for you to have that type of motive slash drive, something had to have happened in your childhood. Something really have had to have fucked you up, and we get that revealed this episode. So, Mr. Choco, he, uh, yeah, he was on the street in the early stages of his life. He was abandoned on the street and all that, half had to fend for himself, and eventually this rich dude came up, noticed him, and the whole reason why this rich dude decided to pick up, you know, Mr. Choco off the street was because he had blonde hair. Because if you look in the flashback we get in this episode with his backstory, oh, there's a bunch of kids that look very similar to him that have blonde hair. And then there's a certain scene where you see Mr. Chocolate, he's in the bed, and you see how he has these bruises all over his back and body, and you see how he's like completely naked, and when you see this dude in the bed. From what I can gather, I'm just going to assume that this dude was gathering all of these children because, for one, they were orphans, but also, number two, he had a certain fetish probably for blonde-haired boys, and that's what we saw. He thought probably, you know, Choco was the best of them all, and he pretty much favored him, and so eventually, after everything was said and done, that's what caused, you know, him to get up into his status and what he became now in this series. So his backstory... It's implied that he was raped. Hmm. That's kind of dark. That, that's, that's pretty fucking dark, I gotta admit. And, I mean, just to think about, like, why he acts like he does now, it makes sense. Because he doesn't want to feel powerless anymore. He wants to change everything. And it makes sense now, because if you're having something like that happen to you when you're a kid or growing up and you're getting raped like that, most likely you're not gonna want to feel like that ever again. I mean, that's a given. So... The reason why he's doing these things, why he's gone so far in the series these past two seasons, is thanks to his upbringing. So, damn, just the characterization he got in this episode, just like, whoa. Vidar is revealed to actually be Golly Golly, which we kind of already guessed this. I mean, the voice actor, to the way he was acting towards, you know, Choco, it was just kind of obvious who it was. And there was already theories circulating that, you know, Ayn was connected to him in some way, maybe a part of his suit, a part of his Gundam frame, something like that. We all kind of already speculated and guessed what he might be or who he might be. So, I mean, it wasn't really much of a surprise when it came to this episode. However, what really was surprising was what what Ayn actually was. So Ayn's brain has been used as kind of like a interface for the AV system for Golly can actually activate it without any restrictions. What this means is, is that you know how Mika, as you know, our main character, how he constantly pushes himself and he loses parts of his body, how he can no longer walk anymore or use half of his body? Well, Vidar, Golly, he's no longer restricted by that. Even though he has the AV system, even though he's using it and he's surpassing his body's limits, he is not overloading his brain. He's not fucking himself over and gonna make it to where he becomes unable to move once he leaves the Gundam frame. And so he has has no restrictions. So that means that this man is way above Mika in terms of not being restricted by anything because this man could go all out, go completely crazy, and he won't have to worry about his body, you know, being fucked up once he is done. And Mika, he has to push himself to the point to where he loses all functions of his body. So that's interesting. I, I love how this was kind of dived into with this episode and how it was revealed that, you know, Vidar, you know, he actually now has no restrictions, which kind of levels the playing field, honestly, when, you know, he goes up against Mika or any other character now because he can go all out without any restrictions because Ayn is there. His brain is being used instead of actually, you know, Golly's brain. His is not being used, but it's actually Ayn. So, yeah, kind of unfair if you if I want to be honest here. I mean, it's a little bit unfair for poor Mika. I mean, this, this man's gotten fucked over constantly by the AV system since season one and season two, and now you see this, you're like, damn, that's, that's kind of fucked. Anyways, though, let's talk about the situation with Mr. Choco and how he also has the AV system. That, that right there, it's honestly 
surprising slash not surprising and what's really cool about it is that he actually has been studying the AV system and he's been doing his own little you know I guess experiments with it for he can actually use it for himself and so I'm going to assume he's been using you know I in the entire time throughout the first season all that he's been watching what tekadon has been doing to kind of change around the AV system for he can use it properly and eventually pilot Bell the Gundam frame now speaking of that I just gotta say I love that fucking name I love Bell I love that name. I love that demon name because I've heard this demon name in other games I've played like Diablo. If you've ever played, you know, the game Diablo, you most likely know who Bell is. I just love Bell. I love the, uh, the way it sounds. And just hearing like a Gundam frame being called Bell of all things, I'm like, damn, that's fucking badass. It's just such a badass name. And I do know all the Gundam frames are named after devils and stuff like Barbados and all that. And now Bell and stuff. I, I know that majority of the Gundams are named after, you know, well-known demons in mythology. It's just, I really like the name Bell and just being... Being like the top dog of all, you know, Gundam frames, you know, Bell that stands among Galhorn, it's like their symbol, pretty fucking badass. Now, speaking of Galhorn, let's just talk about this symbol for a second. So, apparently, if you manage to operate Bell, the Gundam frame, you have complete control over Galhorn because the first person to found Galhorn was the person that operated Bell. And so, if you're able to pilot this, you control Galhorn. You can do whatever you want. It's like you're the leader of Galhorn and nobody can question your authority. And with this, we now know that apparently Galhorn never decided to try the AV system at all. And I mean, it does make sense when you think about it because remember, Galhorn had a very, very big prejudice towards the AV system. Like, they didn't like, you know, well, what Tekadon was. They don't like how, you know, they manipulate and alter their body. We saw this through Galley, how Galley, you know, manipulated his body, and also how, you know, now we, we saw Ainz in the past as well. We know because of the change in his body, many of Galhorn thought that was disgusting, disgraceful, something you shouldn't do at all. And so it makes sense why maybe none of Galhorn was ever able to pilot, you know, Bell, is because none of them ever had the AV system in the first place. Because if you had an AV system, that means you might be able to activate it right off the bat, but since nobody really believed in having the AV system because they thought it was like some form of demon attachment to your body, that is why nobody could ever pilot it. So, thanks to their incompetence is why this is all happening. Thanks to him jumping in it and their incompetence, this is why all this is going down. Now, I do like the motives of, you know, Mr. Choco. I do. I mean, it's understandable why he's acting like he is. And it's understandable now why he wants authority, power, and why he, you know, respects, you know, brute force as well. Now I understand, and I think it's very clear now why he's been acting like he has since the first season of, you know, Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans. So it's really building up to be an epic arc of of the series right now. I don't know if this is going to be the final arc of Gundam Season 2, because when I think about it, there's like... Isn't this going to be a 25-episode series, or is it going to... I think it has like seven episodes left or so, somewhere around in there, yeah. I, I think it's going to be around like seven or six episodes left, and so if that is the case, that would mean that, you know, we might have room for another arc after this one, because judging by how we've seen from Gundam so far, when it comes to arcs, we have maybe like three or four episodes focused on a central arc, and then we focus on another arc, and so if we have like seven episodes left, that means we'll have like maybe four episodes focusing around this, what's going on right now, and then we'll go into like the last three episodes are kind of like the, you know, final stretch of the series, maybe the epilogue or something, or how the world has changed, maybe something like that. So yeah, episode and this arc is looking really nice so far, and so far I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing in this episode, especially with, you know, how Gali is back and how he's, you know, calling out the cho Chocolate Man, how he's like saying, oh, this is what's wrong with you, how you don't really have any love in you, you don't respect it, all you, only thing you respect is authority, power, and brute force. I really like that side of, you know, Vidar and how he's doing that in this episode so yeah let me know your thoughts in the comments below you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live please be safe chibi out